Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert. If you're not already using the Avid Control app, maybe you should think about it because Pro Tools is better running it than it is without. And it's free and it runs on hardware that you probably already own. If you've ever seen the app before, then you'll have seen this screen. This is the mixer screen. And I've heard lots of people say things like, oh, I don't like touch sensitive screen faders. And I don't either. I don't really use this page, but there's loads more in this app that makes it absolutely worth using. And the first of those is the tracks page. Here we are on the tracks page. Each of these tiles represents a track. And running in select mode, you can navigate your sessions really quickly using these tiles. So, for example, if I want to go to my first guitar track, it's the first green one. There we go. If I want to go to my first vocal track, there we go. If I want to get back to my kick drum track, just tap that one and I'm there. There's other things you can do in here. You can set it to solo any track you tap or, or record enable one. But it's select and session navigation that I use it for most. Next is channel view. Channel view is a funny one because it makes loads more sense if you see it in use with a, an Avid dock because there are hardware encoder knobs down either side of the tablet and they correspond to these controls on the right and left of the screen. But there's a couple of really useful things in here that can make checking and accessing the same parameter or parameters across multiple tracks quickly really easy. So uh, there's some common elements compared to the tracks view here. We've got these tracks tiles up here. And we've also got this universe view that we can use to quickly navigate the session. And uh, from here, you can get to anything you'd find on the channel. So you know, EQ, for example. Uh, this EQ curve is display only. Unfortunately, you can't edit the EQ curve from that. You have to use these. But um, if you add to that this, if I press this bottom left button, what we'll get is we get a fader for, for the currently attentioned channel. So uh, as I move around... I'll get a different fader on each one and a corresponding set of parameters that I can use to navigate my session from here. So worth knowing about this uh, extra little, uh, little fader just down here. Okay, next is monitoring. Uh, monitoring is an interesting one because uh, if you're lucky enough to have an Avid Matrix, you can you can control loads of stuff from here. But regardless of what hardware you're using, you can get rudimentary monitor control. Lots of people don't know that. If I jump back to tracks and I find my first, there we go, I'll go to my uh, master fader. If I right click on here, the very last entry on that menu is Yukon Monitor. If that's checked, like it is here, then that master is assigned to... Uh, this monitoring section. So if I hit play, level, cut, and dim. Next, I want to talk about soft keys. Soft keys are a big subject in Avid Control. We've got uh, 150 pages of them. It's pretty easy to get around. Uh, all of these purple tiles with the corner cut off are shortcuts that take you somewhere else. So, for example, I could go to memory locations. If I want to get back to where I was, hit home. At home is always there. So if I go to advanced automation, I can get back home from the same place. And you can set up your own custom palette of soft keys. But I'm not going to concentrate on that. That's really good. But I'd probably start down here at the bottom. If we come somewhere else, go back to that tracks window, it's still there. It persists. It, you either have the transport controls, which you get by default, or these soft keys. And it's really easy to set up your own custom palette of soft keys. It comes pre-populated, but you can change them. And this is how you do it. You go up into Yukon, Yukon Settings. And if you select Control Lower, there's a load of hardware here that you probably don't have, but Control Lower is the one on the iPad. And here they are. And uh, this one, for example, we'll set this one up again. Back and play. Really useful. So I'm going to clear that. And if I want to set something up here, all I do is I go Command, Add New. This is a Yukon. Uh, it's in Transport and it's in Locate. Back and Play. There it is. And just want that. I can make it any colour I want. That's kind of fun. Orange, that'll do. And uh, yeah, there it is. So come back into Pro Tools and here's my Back and Play button ready to go. And uh, that means that for automation passes, say, if I, if I miss a cue, I can just stay in playback and knock it back by a preset amount and go again. 
So there's a handful of reasons why you should consider engaging with Avid Control App because uh, if you get to know it, it makes using Pro Tools that little bit easier. <laughs>